In the blessed name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, I welcome one and all to the Diamond Jubilee Thanksgiving and 47th graduation service of the Far Eastern Bible College. Congregation, please stand. Let us all remain standing and let us now sing the college anthem.
Our Father in heaven, thou who art full of mercy, truth, and compassion, we come to thy presence this evening for the 47th graduation service of Far Eastern Bible College. Lord, bless us according to all thy good promises. Thou hast dealt well with thy servants, whom thou hast called and commissioned to serve thee in the teaching and proclamation of thy word. Thou art good, O Lord, and thou doest good. Teach us thy statutes. We thank thee, O Lord, once again, the board, the faculty, and the student body of the Far Eastern Bible College, together with this congregation that thou hast gathered. Rejoice in all thy goodness toward us. We thank thee for the gift of salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, who alone is the Savior that thou hast provided for this world and no other. We thank thee for the grace to believe on him and to know his name dearly in our hearts. Thank you for the most wonderful words, the inspired infallible, inerrant scriptures that thou hast given to us. How we love thy law, O Lord. It is our meditation all the day. Surely thy words are very sweet unto our taste, sweeter than honey to our mouth. And it has been our pleasure to rejoice in his wonderful truths and receive the blessings thou hast promised through thy word. As we now enter into a time of worship and rejoicing together with thanksgiving for the students whom thou hast called and been guiding through the teaching of this institution, as they complete their studies and graduate today, we commit them into thy hands that we may together serve in the days ahead of us. Teach us to be faithful to you till Jesus returns. And may thy presence guide us, and may thy blessings upon us all throughout this service. With thanksgiving, in the most precious name of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Please be seated. The reading of the Holy Scripture taken from Psalm 34. Psalm 34. A Psalm of David when he changed his behavior before Abimelech, who drove him away, and he departed. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were lightened and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. 
Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Come, ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is he that desireth life and loveth many days, that he may see good? Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all their troubles. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. He keepeth all his bones, not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them the trust in him shall be desolate. The Lord add his blessings upon the reading of his inerrant, infallible, inspired, preserved word. Let us now Turn our Bible to 1 Kings chapter 17. 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 1, verse 9. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, as the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Cherish, that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord. For he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening. And he drank of the brook. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he had come, to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks, and he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks, that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat and die. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, 
and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the crews of all fail, until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. Fiston Bible College is 60 years old this year. This is our Diamond Jubilee. And there's much we can thank God for. And the Lord has kept this school of prophets for the last 60 years for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. It is by the good hand of God's providence that we are provided for, we are protected from all harm and evil, and also preserved in our testimony and witness for our God and our Savior. So we give all glory and honor to Him. And let me recount and highlight how the Lord has providentially provided for, protected, and preserved the FEBC. First, the founding of the college. FEBC opened its doors on September the 17th, 1962. And according to the founding principal, the late Reverend Dr. Timothy Toe, the school was a hall of majestic emptiness. Yes, new and nice buildings and rooms, but not one stick of furniture. Nevertheless, Reverend Tu, on the very first opening day of prayer, encouraged the pioneer students to take heart to trust the Lord. And he read from Psalm 34, verse 10. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. How true. The Lord provided for all our needs, both physical and spiritual, from the very first day. And if you want to know how, please go and ask the very first graduate of FEBC, which is none other than our matron, Mrs. Ivy Toe. She was one of the first students and the first graduate of the BTH. Ask her. God wonderfully provided, even from the first day, food and bed. God is good. God is faithful, and he hears the prayers of his saints, even of his servants. The young lions do, do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. And let me just read from this special edition of the Burning Bush, our Diamond Jubilee Thanksgiving issue with regard to God's providence in the college. I hope you get a copy. If you have not already gotten a copy, please help yourself to one after the service. Throughout the decades of FEBC's existence, Reverend Toll testified of God's unwavering providence shown towards the college. From its small beginnings of three students only, within 10 years, the student body grew four times. Also, despite minimum tuition fees, the college has always been able to continue running without any hindrance due to the prayerful financial support and love gifts of church brethren. As principal, Reverend Toe, has always advocated frugality and economy in the college. 
this principle of economy and maximum use, he testified, has saved the college especially tens of thousands of dollars. When there was a need to extend the campus capacity to accommodate the increasing student body, the Lord used the combined ministry of the FEBC with Life BP Church to enable the increase. Reverend To likened the relationship between the church and college to the widow of Zarephath and the prophet Elijah. Both entities help each other for the glory of God. As Reverend Toh mused upon God's providence shown towards FEBC in the past, he echoed the words of Samuel, Hitherto hath the Lord helped us. 1 Samuel chapter 7, verse 12. Indeed, as much as God has provided for the college in times past, we continue to trust in the Lord for the future. And we know the Lord Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He does not change. He's most trustworthy, and he is faithful to his promise. Our only duty is to seek him first, put him first, and glorify him. And he will take care of all our needs. So if a college is to expect God's Provision, she must first have God's mandate to exist. This mandate was given to our founding principle. And this happened as early as 1954, when he was convicted by the Spirit to start a Bible college. In his book, The Singapore BP Church Story, page 82, Reverend Toh testified under the heading, Vision of a Bible College, how the Lord moved him to found FEBC. And let me quote from what he wrote. He said, One vision that had been shared by elders of our church movement since as early as 1954 was the founding of a Bible college to train workers not only for our expanding ministries, but also for the propagation of the gospel and defense of the faith throughout the Far East. Theological training of our consecrated young people became such an ever-increasing burden upon the pastor's heart. The trend is toward the trained. And that's this slogan. Hitherto, we have sent some of our young people to the West for theological training. But if the Lord will call another half dozen, how can we afford to send them all? The solution to training future ministers of the gospel, I believe, is the founding of a Bible college in Singapore. Yes, a Bible college a college that reverently teaches the Bible to be the infallible, inerrant Word of God that seeks to obey all its commandments, that will make no compromise whatsoever with the subtle forces of Satan that are so actively undermining theological institutions everywhere today. Surely the Lord heard that prayer and honored that noble desire of our founding principle. The Lord wonderfully provided to both church and college with a spacious sylvan site at 9A Gilstead Road, which is a very, very central and convenient location in Singapore. The Lord also provided the funds necessary for the construction of the buildings. And the funds were raised not just in the name of the church, but also in the name of the college. In fact, when it was announced that the Bible college would be built, the building funds saw a significant increase. People gave even more after they heard that the Bible College will be built 
on the premises. So in this way, the college was a real blessing to the church, just like Elijah was a blessing to the widow of Zarephath. As we have read, and the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the crews of all fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. 1 Kings 17, verse 16. So we see how the Lord has provided for his school of prophets, the FEBC, with all the physical necessities that we need to function. God is faithful to his promise. He has provided till today. And every semester, we are not in the red. The Lord has moved the people to give. As long as we stand four square on God's word and defend the Holy Scriptures as divinely inspired and perfectly preserved, I believe when we honor the Lord, he will honor us as he promised. The second is this, the lawsuit against FEBC. One of the greatest crises FEBC went through was the lawsuit against her in 2008. Life Church sued to evict FEBC from 9A Gilstead Road. And this is national news. Right? Most of all of you would know about it. It was in the papers. And after the verdict was out, the Straits Times reported on May the 21st, 2011, with the headlines, Church Fails to Evict College over Doctrine Rao. Well, what happened? FEBC was defending the faith. FEBC was defending the Bible. We are a Bible college, and we must defend the Bible when it is attacked. And that was what we did. FEBC believes in the verbal and plenary preservation, in short, VPP, verbal plenary preservation of the Holy Scriptures meaning the Bible is 100% preserved to the jot and tittle, as Jesus said. Till heaven and earth pass, one jot, one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Matthew 5, 18. And we also read this in Psalm 12, 6 to 7. The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, the words. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. And the Lord Jesus also said, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words, uh, take note, not my word in general, but my words, every word that I have breathed out and found in Scripture, I will preserve will never pass away. In the Westminster Confession of Faith, 1646, states very clearly, the Old Testament in Hebrew and the New Testament in Greek, being immediately inspired by God and by his singular care and providence, kept pure in all ages, are therefore authentical, in other words, infallible, inerrant, so as in all controversies of religion, the church is finally to appeal unto them. VPP upholds the present infallibility, total inerrancy, and absolute authority of the Holy Scriptures. Life Church sadly, calls it a deviant doctrine. 
even a heresy. They only believe in the verbal plenary inspiration, VPI, of the scriptures. And that is in the autographs. But do we have the autographs today? Now, that's the question. The autographs, they say, are no more. What we have are the apographs, the copies. And we believe that God has preserved his word in the apographs. To the last iota, the last jot and tittle, according to his promise. So the apographs, we believe, are also infallible and inerrant by God's singular care and providence. The scriptures we have in our hands today. So Life Church gave FEBC an ultimatum. Unless you sign an undertaking not to teach VPP, you cannot continue here. You have to vacate the premises. So what was our response? There's only one response. Acts 5.29. We ought to obey God rather than men. So Life Church filed a lawsuit to evict FEBC. And the case was tried at the High Court, and it went all the way up to the Court of Appeal. God, in His providence, saved FEBC. God is faithful and true to His promises. For them that honor me, I will honor, the Lord said, and they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. 1 Samuel 2, verse 30. FEBC believes in the special providence of God. And FEBC believes God providentially preserved his inspired words as he promised. And by the logic of faith, we can know for sure what words are the inspired words and which word is the authentic word. It's all a matter of faith. When you put on the glasses of faith, you see the Holy Spirit will teach you and guide you into all truth. And he will convict you and convince you. It's not through human reasoning or arguments. It's all based on the sole, supreme, and final authority of God's word, which is infallible, inerrant, 100% perfect, without mistake, not only in the past, but also today. And we believe the authentic word to be the Hebrew Masoretic text and the Greek textus receptus on which the authorized version is based. Because these texts show the marks of special providential preservation. And such a position is truthful, is faithful, and it glorifies God. And God honored and vindicated his school of prophets. God, in his providence, gave to us honest and honorable lawyers. We are going to court. Who is going to represent us and defend us? God provided good, honest, honorable lawyers to defend us. And we did not purposely go out to seek or ask for them. But the Lord, in his own wisdom, gave us the best. The number one law firm in Singapore, Ellen and Gladhill. I never knew that. Until later, the Lord gave us the best. Ellen and Gladhill, number one law firm in Singapore, and senior counsel, 
Ang Cheng Hock represented us. Well, he was not senior counsel when he took our case. A year later, he was promoted to senior counsel. I believe the Lord blessed him. So he represented us with his team. And by the way, right now he is promoted even further. He's now High Court Justice. So we thank God for providing for us good, honest, honorable lawyers to help us. And we must not forget to thank law professor Tan Yok Lin. He's an expert in trust law. And the premises of FEBC is governed by the law of charitable purpose trust. We never understood this. But he took the time and the trouble to explain to us, the board of directors, what it's all about. And the case for FEBC. And how did, did we have access to him? Well, God providentially let him here. He is a worshiper here at Calvary Pandan BP Church. So how we thank God for how he has led and provided for us all that we need. So God has sent him to the right place at the right time to help us. And so just as the Lord provided for King David a good counsellor in Husha, so did the Lord provide for FEBC. In fact, we had many Hushais, not just one, many Hushais, good counsellors, Christian lawyers, and we thank God for all of them. Another act of God's providence is in Reverend Toll's recording of history, history of the church and history of the college. In his weekly and in his books, and without the faithful, meticulous, careful, accurate recording of the giving of the people and the building of the premises, FEBC would be hard-pressed to prove its case. He being dead yet speaketh. Hebrews 11 verse 4. How is it that Revento would recount and write so meticulously and in such great detail what went on in the fundraising and the building of the premises and even the philosophy, the governance and ethos of the college in its weeklies and publications. Usually when we write, we write in general terms, but he was so meticulous. I think it's God moving him. Providence tells us that God sees and knows ahead of time. Providence comes from two Latin words, meaning before and to see. God saw ahead. God saw beforehand what will happen, and he prepares, puts things in place, people at the right place at the right time, things done in the proper way so that his people will be protected and preserved in the days to come when there's trouble. We could not foresee all these things, but God foresaw and he prepared ahead of time. That is providence. And not just that, there was also the 1970 agreement between church and college concerning the sharing and the use of the premises. And this agreement reveals a charitable purpose trust over the property. So it doesn't matter if you have the title deed or not. Uh, the important thing is this trust, a charitable purpose trust. 
and this protects FEBC's right to the land. Who knew, who knew FEBC would need such an agreement or document? Who knew? God knew, and he prepared the deliverance of FEBC way ahead of time to make sure that the church cannot evict the college. In fact, when this agreement, 1970 agreement, this document was shown to Prof Tan, immediately he said, stay put, don't go, stay put. You have, the, you have every right to the premises. So God knew already way ahead of time to make sure the church cannot evict the college. This is God's providence. Please know there is a God in heaven. He is on his throne and he's in control of each and every one of our lives. So we take comfort. We can only have confidence in him. We don't know. He knows. And he knows how to take care of us. And thank God for the outcome. As you know, the High Court ruled in favor of Life Church. And God has a special reason for this. The High Court judge made a mistake. But God makes no mistakes. And he allowed this to happen for a reason. So the case went up to the Court of Appeal, the highest court in the land. The Court of three judges, the top three judges. And they examined the case, they reviewed the case, and it was a unanimous decision. All three ruled in favor of FEBC and completely overturned the ruling of the court below. So in the judgment dated April the 26, 2011, the Court of Appeal ruled that FEBC has every right to occupy the premises. And not only that, it's a remarkable thing. They even made a, a declaration, a statement on doctrine. A secular court issuing a statement on doctrine, namely VPP, right? The doctrine in contention. Life just says it's deviant. We say it is the truth. And God speaks through the secular court. And they made this, this declaration. The college, in adopting the VPP doctrine, has not deviated from the fundamental principles which guide and inform the work of the college right from its inception and as expressed in the Westminster Confession, and that it is not inconsistent for a Christian who believes in the principles contained within the Westminster Confession and the VPI doctrine to also subscribe to the VPP doctrine. And as such, we hesitate to find that the VPP doctrine is a deviation from the principles contained within the Westminster Confession. I can only say, praise the Lord. God spoke through the Court of Appeal. This is his wonderful providence. He is in charge. He's in control. And he can vindicate his word and vindicate his school of prophets. Proverbs 21 verse 1 says, The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord, as the rivers of water. He turneth it whithersoever he will. We see God's wonderful providence in this whole episode. I must say we have grown in our faith. We have not learned, we have not only learned providence in the scriptures, we experience this providence in these things. The third, 
COVID-19 pandemic. The COVID-19 scourge came quite suddenly in early 2020, as we all know. But it should not come as a surprise because the Lord already predicted that in the last days, there will be wars and rumours of wars. Aren't we seeing that today? For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Matthew 24, 6 to 8. These are the signs of the times. And they tell us the Lord is coming back very soon. How are we living our life for the Lord? When Singapore went into a lockdown, well, it's called a circuit breaker, a nice sounding term. And when physical classes had to be cancelled or replaced by virtual ones, we thank the Lord that we were ready. That was because we already have the experience and expertise in offering courses online since 2009. As such, the transition was relatively smooth. Our IT personnel could get the classes online on short notice. So providentially, the lockdown came near the end of the semester. We just had about two more weeks before the exams. And so the disruption and the inconvenience was not so great. Well, God's timing, His providential timing, helped us. The government lockdown mantra was stay home, stay safe. But what is there to occupy the people when they are cooped up at home? Why not study the Bible? So FEBC offered online courses for free. Freely we have received, freely give. We offered the courses for free from May 11th to July the 5th. And students could take them for credit and work towards their certificate. We thank God for a good number here who have work, worked very hard for their credits. And today they are going to be awarded their hard-earned certificate. I congratulate all of you. It's not easy to earn a FEBC certificate. So we praise the Lord during the circuit breaker when free courses were offered. We had a total of 818 students, those who signed up, and they come from 136 churches. And that's a record enrollment for our online classes. Although our online student enrollment went up, I must say that our on-campus, full-time, residential student, the numbers came down. We did not have any new full-time students in 2020. Borders were all closed. No one applied. No one could come. In 2021, we had three new students. Only three managed to get in. Because so many hurdles, administrative hurdles to clear, quarantine and things like, like that. Not easy, but thank God, three managed to come in. We had three new students. And last semester, which just ended, we saw another three. So I was praying, Lord, give us at least a dozen in the new year. Well, God saw to it. Thank God that a dozen plus one from nine countries have applied to study at FEBC in the new semester, beginning July 18th. So pray for them. Pray that the Lord will open a way for them to study because uh, they have to get their student passes approved. So pray the Lord will help them and open a way for all these uh, applicants, new students, to come in. We need more laborers. Harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are still few. 
Pray, pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. And FEPC is good training ground. The Lord in his providence has provided for, protected and preserved FEBC all these years. Indeed, the young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Psalm 34 verse 10. All glory be to God. It is customary for the board and faculty every year at the convocation like this to take an oath to pledge our allegiance to the infallible, inerrant word of God. So I ask board and faculty now to stand where you are and let us confess our faith Surely this is a faithful word. So let us swear to uphold and defend God's forever infallible and inerrant word with our right hands raised. Let us take the Dean Bergen oath. I swear in the name of the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that I believe the Bible is none other than the voice of him that sitteth upon the throne. Every book of it, every chapter of it, every verse of it, every word of it, every syllable of it, every letter of it, is the direct utterance of the Most High. The Bible is none other than the Word of God, not some part of it more, some part of it less, but all alike, the utterance of him that sitteth upon the throne, faultless, unerring, supreme. So help me, God. Amen. Please be seated. And now the award of certificates and conferral of degrees. We thank God for the 32 graduates we have this year. And they have all worked very hard. We congratulate each one of you. May the Lord bless you and may you reconsecrate yourself to love the Lord and to serve the Lord until we see him face to face. So by the authority vested in me as principal of the Far Eastern Bible College, I hereby confer on you your certificates and degrees with all the rights and privileges appertaining thereto. I will ask the academic dean, the Reverend Dr. Craig Sonu, to assist in calling their names when one by one you'll come and receive your diplomas. So please stand and line up. Awarding the Certificate of Religious Knowledge, Selina Franiella.
Chan Jia Hui Samantha. Chao On Yik Victoria. Kovil Pilar AP David John. Agapa Jose Trinipil the second Ba'a. Li Mei Hua. Li Mei Yi. Ong Jia Ling Christine. Tan Mei Yok. <laughs> Wong Siu Ping, Linda in absentia. <laughs> Wei Tan. Awarded the Certificate of Biblical Studies, Chu Ziyang Marcus. <laughs> Jeffrey Sitiawan. Chao Ong Sun Sophia. <laughs> Natalia Fernandez Hing. <laughs> Ong Su Ling. Wailing Angeline <laughs> Pang Yi Hong <laughs> Hei Kiat Siong Jonathan Tam Nam Le Samuel <laughs> awarded the diploma in theology, Hua Lai Huat Harry. Conferred the Bachelor of Religious Education, Generals Brava Sagayok. <laughs> the Gapa Tessa Baa Cum Laude.
Tang De Tiang. And further, the Bachelor of Theology, Giza Berindes Dandoy. <laughs> and further, the Master of Ministry in Absentia, George Jeru Manya. Conferred the Master of Religious Education, B. Yunling Gracia. <laughs> Qin Xiang Liang. Conferred the Master of Divinity, Chu Kai Shen David, Cum Laude. <laughs> Han Wei Wei. the Guzman Reclamy. <laughs> Conferred the Doctor of Religious Education, Jonathan Chariot Langat. And now let us ret return thanks to the Lord with our thanksgiving offerings. And we shall sing this hymn of dedication and service. And this hymn was, was penned by Dr. Chan Ke Him, is a deacon of True Life BP Church. So let's, let's sing this hymn.
God. Thou who art the Almighty God, the Creator of all things. Our lips declare, Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. Our hearts rejoice, O God, who art beyond all praising, for Thou also art gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great mercy. Indeed, Lord, we honour and adore You, O great and mighty Lord. And today, as we commemorate this 47th graduation service of the Far Eastern Bible College, we remember, Lord, how You have raised and preserved the FEBC all these 60 years. Indeed, we can only wonder at every gift you sent, blessings without number, mercies without end. Indeed, Lord God, we do, as the psalmist said, one generation shall praise thy works to another and shall declare thy mighty acts. So, Father, indeed, we thank you for even giving us this opportunity this privilege to present these gifts and offerings for the work of the FEBC. May you bless each and every cheerful giver, and may these offerings be used to the glory of your great name. And indeed, Lord, we pray that you will remind us that this is but the least that we can do for you today, but that, Lord, you will help us to live our lives as a living sacrifice all the days of our lives, to bring glory and honour to your name. For we ask and pray all this in Christ's most holy and precious name. Amen. For our closing hymn this evening, please stand as we sing, Pass On the Torch of God. Please remain standing for closing prayer and benediction. Let us pray. Almighty God, our gracious, merciful, loving, holy, heavenly Father, we thank thee, O Lord, 
that thou art the one who has raised up this college, and thou the one who has sustained it, defended it, and watched over it. We thank thee, O Lord, for thy supreme and omnipotent providential care over your work and your ministry. We commit, O Lord, the board of directors, the faculty, and the student body, and all the office staff unto your loving hand. Forgive us, O Lord, of all our sins where we have failed thee, and not defend thy word the way that we ought, and not have preached and taught and obeyed thy word the way that we have ought to do so. Forgive us. We acknowledge, O Lord, that if not for thy grace and thy mercies in our lives, and in this toward this college, we would all be consumed and fallen by the wayside. For we know that the last days are before us. Momentous and perilous times are already here. Help us, O Lord, to always lean on our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, that even as we earnestly contend for the faith once delivered unto the saints, may we do so with thy strength and thy strength alone. Fill us with thy Holy Spirit and send us forth, O Lord, to be courageous, faithful servants of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We pray especially for FEBC and especially for the graduating students. May thou be gracious and merciful to put the fear of God in all these your servants. And as thou send them forth into the vineyard, may they be found faithful, may they begin their ministry on bended knees, and they will continue to serve thee rejoicing evermore, pray without ceasing, learning to give thanks in all things, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning them. And as they lay their hands on the plough, may they not look back, but to look forward and to look upward, ever trusting in our Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ, to defend them, to protect them, and keep them always in the path of holiness all the days of their lives until the glorious return of our Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank thee, O Lord, for every item of this evening, praise, worship, and thanksgiving. May the name of our Saviour be highly exalted and magnified, for he must increase and we decrease. We thank thee, Father, for thy providential care and thy preservation of all our lives throughout this pandemic, and most important of all, for keeping us in the most holy faith. And we pray, O Lord, that you will be gracious and merciful, sustain and keep all of us safe in thy loving care as we see the day of the Lord fast approaching. May all of us be found faithful and none of us be found wanting. For we ask all these things with thanksgiving in the most blessed and holy and wonderful name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Dismiss us now, O God, with the blessings of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Seated.